In this video, we'll be doing some practice at working on forces with angles. So these first two situations are actually really, really easy. Uh, we've got only forces that are acting on the x, y axes, so nothing really strange happening here. Um, you can see in A, we've got the top cancels out with the bottom, and then our Fu, in this case, is just equal to 12 newtons going right. All right, and then it asks you to calculate the acceleration in these. Um, something to think about with these problems is we know that Fu equals ma, but oftentimes we calculate Fu and then it asks us to calculate A, and so then we say A equals Fu over m. I think that's a, a convenient rearrangement of this so that we then would just know that acceleration was equal to our Fu 12 over our mass, which is 2. Uh, by the way, I know that the mass is 2 because the gravitational force is 20. All right, um, so that means it has to be 2 kilograms. And then we get 6 meters per second per second to the right for the acceleration. For B, we've got another similar situation. It's pretty clear to see how it balances out here. In this case, top cancels out with bottom, left kind of cancels out with right, and what we end up with is Fu equals 4 newtons going to the right. And by similar logic, we know that acceleration equals 4 over 2, the Fu over the mass, which equals 2 meters per second per second to the right. Making things a little bit more complicated here, now I'm going to introduce some forces that we have at angles. Um, for 2A, the top cancels out with the bottom, and so the only unbalanced force is that FA. And so we know that Fu in this case actually is the same thing as Fa because the top and the, the bottom cancel each other out. So Fu in this case is equal to 15 newtons at 30 degrees above the horizontal. Our acceleration then, we're still dealing with a 2 kilogram object because Fg is still 20, so acceleration is equal to 15 over 2, which equals 7.5 meters per second per second at 30 degrees. All right, and so that one's pretty simple too. It's just we've got one force there that's unbalanced. The top cancels out with the bottom. Now 2B gets into an entirely different sort of situation. In 2B we've got top and bottom and then we've got a left force and then we've got FA which is kind of going up and to the right and it's unclear now how everything is interacting with everything else because part of that Fa is going to cancel out and part of it will not cancel out. Um, we still have the normal force and the gravitational force sort of directly cancel out already. Um, so you can kind of, you could sort of ignore that the F normal and the gravitational force exist, but there's a portion of the Fa that cancels out because of the friction force that we have here. And so here's how you have to evaluate it. When you look at that Fa, that angled force, the, uh, well it stands for applied force, but it's at an angle in this case. You have to think about how much of it is going up and down and how much of it is going left and right. And so one thing here, uh, I'm just going to make a diagram that has all the bits on it, Fn is 20, all right, Fg equals 20, all right, then we've got this FFR here that's 8. Right, and then you have this force that's up this way, right, which is our Fa. And that one we're going to break into components here so that we can think about how much of Fa is going to the right and how much of Fa is going up. To do this, uh, we have to recognize that the 30 degree angle is in here. All right, and then we use trigonometry. To figure that out, I know, um, for instance, that the sine of 30 equals that vertical side over 
um, BFA, which in this case is 15. So the 15 is the hypotenuse in this case. So we can set it up that way. And what we end up with then is if you solve for y, you get y equals 15 times the sine of 30, which is just 7.5. All right, and so we know that this side is 7.5 newtons. And then along the bottom, you can do a sig similar trigonometric analysis, and you get that it is 13 newtons going to the right. So we've got a rightward component here, and we've got an upward component. And so then you're going to kind of ignore the diagonal facing force and just look at the components here. Uh, and what we get is if you look at how things are unbalanced going left and right, uh, we end up with an Fu that is going up and to the right here. But the degree of unbalancedness that we have along the bottom there is just 5 newtons. This is because if you look at all the forces, we have the friction force is 8 going to the left, and then the applied force is 13 going to the right, and so we end up with just 5 newtons going to the right. And then if you look at the ups and the downs, we end up with 7.5 newtons going up here, all right, as everything cancels out. And so our unbalanced force, the degree to which those forces are unbalanced, looks like this. We have a 5 newtons on one side and 7.5 newtons on the other side. And so to figure out what this is, we have to use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. From that, you can figure that out that Fu equals 9.01 newtons. All right, and then you have to use some trigonometry to figure out what this angle theta is here. And what we find out is that theta equals, I would use the inverse tangent function, tangent negative 1 of, opposite over adjacent, so 7.5 over 5. And you get that theta equals 56.3 degrees. Okay, and so then as a final answer here for our Fu, our Fu equals 9.01 newtons at 56.3 degrees above the horizontal and our acceleration is going to be half that because of the whole um, Fu over m so 9.01 over 2 because the mass is still 2. All right and what we end up with there is something like 4.5 4 meters per second per second. And then it's also at 56.3 degrees. All right, and that's kind of how that one ends up. And so in a case where you have an unbalanced force that is unbalanced both in the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction, you have to set up what's called an unbalanced force diagram. That is the thing uh, that we have down on the bottom here where you just write out the components and then figure out what the hypotenuse would be um, and find out the FU in that manner. Getting here to doing some actual problems with this, some actual word problems, uh, it says that there's a five kilogram block, and it says it's pulled across frictionless ice by a rope at a direction of 45 degrees above the horizontal. It says there's no air resistance, and you have to find the magnitude and direction of FU, and also the acceleration. Okay, and it says also find out what the normal force is, so lots of stuff here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my uh, force diagram. I try and err on the side of making large ones because you got to get all the angles in there and things like that. And so the different forces that we have acting on this, we have a gravitational force. It's a 5 kilogram block, so it's 50 newtons. We also have a normal force here. We don't know what that is yet, and I'll explain kind of why in just a second. Um, it's frictionless, so we do not have any friction force on it. But we have this Ft here, which we know equals 50 newtons. And it says it's at 45 degrees. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break that tension force into two different components. And I know it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle, so this is 45 degrees. This is a right angle. The other angle is 45. And then you should be able to do some trigonometry on this and find that the sides are 35.4 newtons and 35.4 newtons. All right, it's an isosceles triangle. They're both the same because it's 45, 45, 90. And then we have to think about how, how this object is moving. Now, it's going to be accelerating, but as you're dragging this across the ice, hopefully the assumption is that, uh, in, in your mind, that it's just going to be moving or sliding across the ice, and that it won't be taking off up into the air, for instance. And if we know that it's not taking off up into the air, we know that in the vertical direction that the forces are balanced. Basically, it's not accelerating up and down. It's just accelerating left and right. And so if we look at the, the vertical forces, there's gravity, which is pointing downward. There's normal, which is pointing upward. And then there's that upward component of the tension force. All right, so the tension force is going to the right, and it's also going up. All right, and so basically the upward forces need to equal the downward forces in this case because it's not accelerating in the vertical direction. It's not taking up off the ice, or it's not burrowing down into the ice. Um, and so we know up, the ups and the downs have to balance. Right now we have 50 newtons down, and we have a 35.4 newton force up, and the other force that's missing is an upward force. And so hopefully you can use some logic there and think about it and determine that the normal force is equal to the 50 minus the 35.4 that we already have, and you get 14.6 newtons for that force because it has to add up to 50 going up altogether. So we've got the 14.6 from the normal force, the upward component of the tension force is 35.4. That adds together to give you 50, and then we've got downward 50, and it all works out there. The unbalanced force in this case is only going to the right, which makes sense because this block should be accelerating to the right. It's speeding up as it goes right. And so then we know the, the force that's not balanced in this case equals that 35.4 Newton force going to the right. And in addition to that, uh, we've got our acceleration here, which is going to equal Fu over M. All right, again, that's just a manipulation of the Fu equals MA equation, just rearranging it to solve for A. So A equals Fu over M, which equals 35.4 divided by the 5 for the mass. And what we end up getting there is 7.08 meters per second per second to the right. Okay. This next problem here is an example of what I call an inclined plane problem. Uh, the way that we know that it's one of these inclined plane problems is because there's a person that's on a hill. And so if you got an object, a truck, or a person, or a box, or something like that, and it's on a hill, um, that is going to be this type of problem. All right, it says, first of all, um, we've got an 84 kilogram skier. They're skiing down a slope. And it says, assume that there's no friction or air resistance. All right, and so we've got to think about what forces would be acting on this person. The forces that we have here are a gravitational force, Fg, and that's going downward. That should make sense. Gravity is always downward as long as you're on the Earth. All right. Um, and then the other thing that we have to add here is a normal force. Now, the normal force comes perpendicular to the surface. So if we look at this hill, you know, the normal force is, is not going to be going straight up. It's going to be going up and to the right. And so we add on here our normal force here, and that goes that way. Now, the way that we approach this problem is a little bit strange, and it has to do with the direction of acceleration and the direction of the normal force. Basically, this is what we know. We know that as this skier is moving, they're going to be accelerating 
in the direction of down the hill. Additionally, we've got this normal force which is acting perpendicularly to the hill. And so because the acceleration and that normal force are perpendicular to one another, we know that the forces in the direction of that normal force need to be balanced. And I'll, I'll kind of touch base on this after we get done just to kind of explain it, explain it again. But basically this is what we have here. We've got what I would consider to be two components of the gravitational force, one that is in line with the normal force and the other one that is going down the slope of the hill, all right, and we're going to assess things that way. Now, uh, the next thing you need to think of when you're doing this problem is the angles. And to help you out with that, I've got this method. Somebody called this in my class a snowflake, and I kind of like that. Um, so I'm probably going to keep it that way. So first, how you make this is you start with your traditional x, y axes, and then you need to draw in here a couple lines to represent uh, what, what I would say is our new set of axes. And what it is, is it's basically um, the slope of the hill and then the angle that would be normal to that hill. And what's nice about this method is it, it doesn't really actually matter that you get this very accurate. You could have it be you know, one going on the x-axis, one going on the y-axis, and then one going at 45 degrees on each axis. And it still works out as long as you do it right. Uh, what we've got to do is we've got to try and find this 20 degree angle in our picture down below, in this snowflake picture down below. And so what we can find here, hopefully we see it going this way and then we see it cutting back, right? If you find that same shape down in the bottom, hopefully you'll see that it's here and this is 20 degrees, all right? Once you've got that one angle, the way it works out geometrically for the rest of this is that this is 70 degrees, and that this is 20 degrees again, and that this is 70 degrees, and then we've got 20 degrees, and then 70 degrees. It's just going back and forth all the way across, 20 degrees, 70 degrees. Okay, so now the next thing that we're going to look at is trying to find an angle in our FBD, specifically in the triangle for our gravitational force, and here's what I would recommend. Look here at this angle. We've got something that looks like this, going straight down, and then we've got this going down to the left over here, and try and find that in our drawing, or our little snowflake off to the right. Hopefully you can find it there, and you'll see that this angle up here ends up being 20 degrees. All right, and we're going to use that to solve this problem now. Because now that we've got that the angle there is 20 degrees, and we know that the gravity, which is the hypotenuse of that right triangle, is 840, we can use trigonometry to figure out the other sides. This side here ends up being 287, 287 newtons. And this other side ends up being 789 newtons. All right. And now we have to think about how this problem is working. Because I said this problem um, is, is special because it's on a plane, and we know that it's not accelerating up or down. The way that we know, or I should say, it's not accelerating in the normal direction, which is perpendicular to the plane. Because if it was accelerating in the normal direction, this person would be losing contact with the slope. So we know that it's accelerating going down the hill. So it's accelerating this way, but it's not accelerating uh, in the, on the perpendicular axis to that, because otherwise it would lose contact with the hill. And so this tells us that the normal force here has to cancel out with the force that's going the other way, because these are the perpendicular forces. So we know that this normal force is equal to 789 newtons, because it has to cancel out with this other force that is the, the perpendicular portion of that gravitational force. All right, and then the portion of the gravitational force that's directed down the hill, that 287 newtons, that is our FU. All right, that is the unbalanced part of this force. So normal force, oops, that should say, that should say 789 newtons here. That cancels out with the perpendicular component of our gravitational force, or the normal component of our gravitational force, and 287 is what's left unbalanced here. 
I can draw in the little arrowheads here to help you see that as well. All right. So we've got 287 newtons unbalanced. And the direction of that is down the hill, all right, which is kind of interesting. That's different than just down. Down the hill means it's going in the direction of the hill. All right. Once we have the unbalanced force here, we can figure out what acceleration is. So acceleration equals Fu over M, which equals 287 over the mass of this was 84. You calculate that and you should get 3.42 meters per second per second. And the direction is down the hill. Okay, so that is a typical incline plane problem. Um, I'll do another one of these in a minute, uh, but the, the common theme is it theme is for this that there's something going down a hill or up a hill. So there's going to be a normal force there. Uh, the acceleration will be along the lines of the hill. Um, perpendicular to the hill, we'll have no acceleration. And then the other thing, uh, typically speaking here, we break down the gravitational force on one of these inclined plane problems, and so that's pretty common as well. So uh, on to the end here, it says, if the skier started from rest, how far would she travel in the first 10 seconds of her motion? All right, so this is asking about the motion of the skier, which is hopefully in your mind triggering thoughts of a velocity versus time graph, because that's what we've got to do here. So we've got velocity versus time. Things that we know, we know it's starting from rest and it's accelerating. We also know that it's 10 seconds is uh, the amount of time that we have. And then we can figure out this change in velocity here because it's equal to the acceleration times time, which in this case, we calculate the acceleration is 3.42. All right, and the time is 10 seconds. So that equals 34.2 for our change in velocity, 34.2 meters per second. Then we want to get the area for this because the area is going to give us the distance traveled and that's what it's asked us for. So we're going to try and figure out what this area is. It's a triangle. So our distance traveled here equals one half base times height. So one half times 10 times 34.2. You go through and you calculate that and you get 171 meters traveled. Going on here, we just have a couple more problems that are pretty similar to some things that we've done already. So uh, hopefully this won't be too challenging. This one, we've got a factory worker. He's pushing a shipping box along a roller track here. Um, what's happening, is, it says his hand is at an angle of 25 degrees. Uh, with, with the box, and that's what makes this one a little bit weird in terms of the force diagram. I'm going to go ahead and draw the forces in there. We've got gravity going downward. We've got normal force going up. All right, and then this other force, think about the direction his hand would be pushing because it's kind of hard to get this from the drawing, but this other force which I'd call a normal force because he's pushing it with his hand, um, is going to be down and to the right. Um, that's the direction his arm is pushing. The other thing here that's weird with the angles is if you take his arm and extend it through this way, all right, what we get here um, is something that will help us kind of with our drawing because the way I want to break this normal force down is I want to break it to, into components this way. And so you can see that by vertical angles here with that and with this, that if that 25 degree angle is correct in the picture, then this is also 25 degrees down here, which is the same angle that we have over here. So I'm going to call this 25 degrees. And then it's a right triangle here. And I know that the normal force, based on the information given in the problem, is equal to 25 
newtons. I'm going to shift this down here just to make it a little bit clear. That's the hypotenuse. Fu equals 25 newtons. All right, and then I can go ahead and do the trigonometric analysis on this. And what you find is that the vertical component of this is 10.6 newtons, and that the horizontal component of this is 22.7 newtons. Okay, that was using uh, sines and cosines and things like that. So um, again, if you're having trouble with the trig stuff, make sure you stop in and ask me about that. I'm not going to expressly go over that in these videos. So here's what we know. Uh, we know that this box is going to be accelerating to the right here, all right, as it moves down the track, which means it's not accelerating in the vertical direction. Again, it would hopefully make sense that that box shouldn't be taking up uh, off, in, uh, off into the air, right, or it shouldn't be going down into the track. It should just be going to the right, accelerating along the right. So that means the up and down forces need to be balanced. We've got, in this case, two downward forces and one upward force because the force, the normal force from his hand is going to the right and down. So we've got the downward component of the normal force and we've got gravity going down. Uh, gravity, in this case, equals 70 newtons because it's a 7 kilogram box. All right, so we've got 70 newtons downward from gravity, another 10.6 newtons downward from that normal force. And what we can figure out here is that the normal force, oops, it looks like this says Fu here, so I'm going to correct this. This is the normal force here. That's the normal force from the hand on the box. That was 25. And then the normal force on the box by the conveyor belt, uh, we found out here it needs to be 80.6 newtons. It had to be 80.6 because it had to cancel out with the downward component of that other normal force and the gravity. Okay, so gravity is 70 newtons down. The downward component of that other normal force is 10.6 newtons down, so we need 80.6 newtons up because it's not accelerating in the vertical direction. So the only unbalanced force that remains is that 22.7 newtons that's going to the right. So in this case, Fu equals 22.7 newtons to the right. We know that acceleration equals Fu over M which equals 22.7 over the mass was 7. And when you calculate that, you get 3.24. Oops, 3.24 meters per second per second to the right. All right, so that's the acceleration. We also have the unbalanced force here. All right, and the normal force we got here. Okay. All right, on to this last one. Um, so hopefully looking at this one, we've got a roller coaster going down a hill. Hopefully that triggers you to think this is maybe another inclined plane problem. All right, because it is. We've got a car, uh, in this case a roller coaster car, going down a hill. So things we have, we've got gravity going down. And again, uh, nice, large FBDs are probably good here. We've got gravity going down. We've got a normal force that's perpendicular to the hill, so it needs to be going up and to the right. Okay, and then in this case, we also have a friction force, which is going to be going against the motion, which means it's going to be going up the hill as the car moves down the hill. All right, and so we've got a friction force going up this way, F, F, R. All right, and then this, maybe not the best drawing, but that should be a 90 degree angle here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to split this gravitational force up into components. All right, so I try and make some nice 90 degree angles there. I, again, I'm not the best at this. I don't think most of you are really all too great at it either, but you just got to try and make it reasonable so that you can kind of see how things work. 
Okay, so there's a 90 degree angle there. I've broken this up into components that are, should go along with the normal force and the friction force that we have there. And what we can do then is break this gravitational force down. It's 3,000 newtons for a gravitational force because it's a 300 kilogram car. And what we end up with then, uh, I'm going to make that little snowflake again to try and figure out what the angles are on everything. So down and then across the normal axes, right? And then we have these cross axes here. And then I want to try and find this 65 degree angle somewhere in that snowflake there. All right, hopefully if you look at it, you can see 65 degrees is here. All right, and then it's, it's going to go back and forth with the complement to that. So this next one is 25 degrees, and then 65 degrees, and then 25 degrees, and then 65 degrees, and then 25 degrees, 65 degrees, 25 degrees. And so you'll see here I don't have them exactly right in the drawing. In fact, everything looks kind of like a 45 degree angle. But as long as you can keep them straight, we can figure out what we've got in our drawing here. So we've got on this one, if you think about this is going straight down, right? I'm trying to find this angle here, and then we've got this off to the side. So if you try and find that in our drawing on the bottom, hopefully you can see that it seems like here and here is what we're looking at. And so that means that our, 65, that our angle there is a 65 degree angle. All right, from the picture. All right, which would make this one a 25 degree angle. And then you can go ahead and do the trigonometry once you have the angles on it. That 3,000 is the hypotenuse. So we end up with 27, 19 along this side. All right, and going across the other way, we get 1,268. All right, and everything here should be pretty good. Now, the direction, again, thinking about the directions of acceleration, we know that it is accelerating down the hill. It is not accelerating in the direction perpendicular to hill. That's this way because we know that it's not taking off, uh, losing contact with the rails of the roller coaster or falling through the bottom of the roller coaster. And so we know in that normal direction or that perpendicular direction, things should be balanced. So if we think about these forces here, we've got this 12, uh, 1,268 Newton force that way. That means to balance it out, this needs to be 1,268 Newtons here as well. Uh, for the friction force, you were given in the problem that that was equal to 500 Newtons. All right, and so this is kind of funny, but there are two forces that are in the direction of up or down the hill. There's the friction force, which is going up the hill with 500 Newtons, and then there's this component of the gravity force, which is going down the hill, which is 2,719 Newtons. And so that 2,719 is going to cancel out with the 500, and what we end up with is that Fu here equals 2719 minus 500, okay, because they're going in opposite directions, which equals 2219 newtons, and it's in the direction of down the hill. The next thing to find is the acceleration. Acceleration equals Fu over M, which equals 2219 over the mass, in this case, is 300, which equals 7.40 meters per second per second. And this is in the direction of down the hill. Unfortunately, this is not quite the end of the problem yet, because what it asked us is how long it would take the car to reach the bottom of the 20 meter hill. And so we're really having to solve our problem here about its motion. And so after you get done with all of that, the next thing you need to do is make a velocity versus time graph. We're going to assume that it starts from rest. Calibration is off. 
All right, and what we need to find here then, um, we know that it goes 20 meters, all right, which means that the 20 meters is there. Um, it's the area. We don't know how long it's taken, so we're going to make this t. The other thing we don't know is we don't know what this side is here, so I'll call that change in velocity. We do know that that's the acceleration times the time, which in this case is going to be 7.4 t, because we have the acceleration from the last step. All right, and so what we've got is uh, an equation that we can make in terms of t. We know the area of this, which is 1 half times the base, which is t, times the height, which is 7.4 t equals 20, because the area is 20 meters. All right, and so what we can do is we can solve this for t. Uh, simplifying there, you get 3.7 t squared equals 20. All right, and then solve, divide both sides by 3.7 and take the square root. And you get t equals 2.32. Okay, and that is one of the more difficult problems we will do in all of physics. So if you've got a handle on this problem, you're doing pretty well, all right? Breaking down a force diagram where we're using a non-traditional set of axes, all right? And you have to figure out the angles in there and then use Fu equals Ma and find the acceleration and then do a velocity versus time graph. Um, it's all a very complicated problem. And so uh, hopefully, you know, I, I'm guessing that this seems pretty challenging at this point, but I'm hoping with some practice and repetition that you'll get more and more efficient at doing things like this, uh, and in the end, you'll be able to do it all yourself.